So hey, uh, dear Nordic friends and friends of Nordics, good evening, good afternoon, or good morning to everyone, uh, depending uh, of, from which part of the world you are dialing in. My name is Sami Askerainen from Nordic Innovation House, and I'll be your host today. So it is my great pleasure to warmly welcome you all to our Water, Waste and Food Virtual Market Entry Program closing event, where we will discuss about circular waste uh, economy opportunities in Southeast Asia and in the Nordics. Our WWF program participants have met um, virtually almost 200 different policy and decision makers, uh, investors, potential collaboration and business partners uh, here in Singapore uh, over the last two weeks. And uh, we hope that for many of these companies, this program has uh, been only the first step uh, in Singapore and Southeast Asia. And then they will continue building deeper uh, relationships and more projects here in Southeast Asia. So this closing event is a, is a really nice culmination point and a nice conclusion to our program. Uh, so we are very happy to have you all with us here today. And uh, before we start, a couple of household, uh, householding uh, matters as usual. Uh, so please note that all the participants are automatically muted. Uh, uh, then during the panel, uh, we will have a, you can use the Q&A uh, to ask questions from our panelists and then our panel moderator will pick uh, some, uh, some questions from, from there. Uh, please also then remember to indicate whom your question is for. Uh, we are recording this session as always and then the recording and all the presentation decks that you will be uh, seeing today will be shared with everyone in 24 hours. So on my behalf, uh, welcome again, and uh, then let's have a look at our agenda today. Uh, first, uh, we are very delighted to have Her Excellency Anita Nergard, who is the ambassador of Norway to Singapore with us today, uh, delivering our opening remarks. And uh, after this, we will jump into the very, very exciting panel uh, where we're gonna uh, talk about circular waste economy opportunities in Southeast Asia and in the Nordics. Our moderator, Pa Krista Lund from Innovation Norway, will do the panel introductions then later on. And uh, before we let you go today, there will be an excellent opportunity to hear very quick two minutes uh, showcases from our program participants uh, covering really interesting areas uh, coming from all the way from uh, industrial uh, wastewater, organic waste, and biogas and river cleaning solutions. So I highly recommend that you will stay to the end uh, to hear these out. And um, as we do have uh, quite a lot of new friends of Nordics uh, with us here today, a couple of words about then the Nordic Innovation House before I hand over uh, the stage to her, uh, her excellency. So Nordic Innovation House is essentially what we call a, a community platform that aims to support and help and accelerate high quality Nordic tech startups and scale-ups and growth companies that are coming to Singapore. And of course, many of them are using Singapore as a springboard then for the broader Southeast Asia market. Uh, we are supported by Nordic Innovation. And I have to say that we are really unique collaboration between uh, the Nordic countries. Uh, we do have a five locations globally. Uh, our journey actually started from Silicon Valley, uh, followed by New York, then Singapore, Hong Kong, and Tokyo. And uh, where our daily work is, I would say, industry agnostic, then we have a very clear focus on specific uh, verticals, uh, which is also the reason why we are here today. And in Singapore, these focus areas are uh, circular economy, uh, Nordic Health, so covering med and health tech solutions, and then also then uh, smart cities. And if you wanna uh, find out more about our activities, or if you wanna engage then with the Nordic companies and our members here in Singapore, you can visit our website or then uh, connect our team uh, after this session. But now, without any further ado, uh, I'm gonna invite Her Excellency Anita Nerkart on stage. So Anita, with that, over to you. Thank you, uh, Sami, and um, thank you to the Nordic Innovation House uh, and partners for organizing this virtual market entry program on the circular waste economy. I'm really impressed um, hearing about all the contacts and meetings uh, that the participants have had over these uh, past weeks. And also thank you to Innovation Norway and to the panelists today from Tomra, the Alliance of 
to end plastic waste, um, SCG and NEA. It's a great pleasure for me to open this event. Sustainability, as we know, is at the top of the agenda, be it for countries, companies, or uh, actually individuals. We, we see this um, wherever we look. Uh, and internationally, uh, Norway and Singapore, um, together with Denmark as well, were uh, part of the Leaders' Summit on Climate invited to by President Biden a week ago. And this was a key milestone on the way to the UN Climate Change Conference, uh, COP26, this November in Glasgow. Um, we see a, a great push uh, internationally for sustainability um, these days. The circular economy is an important part of the picture and of the UN Sustainable, sustainable Development Goals, including uh, SDG 6 on energy, uh, 8 on economic growth, 11 on sustainable cities, 12 on sustainable consumption and production, 13 on climate change, 14 on oceans and 15 uh, on life on, on land. And allow me, uh, Sami, to, to highlight uh, some of Norway's efforts to promote clean and healthy oceans, um, which we um, see as part of, of today's uh, discussion. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the UN High Level Panel for a Sustainable Ocean Economy was launched by Prime Minister Solberg a few years ago. And in December last year, the Ocean Panel presented an extensive action agenda, which now needs to be implemented. On our side, Norway is funding a 200 million uh, US dollar program to combat marine litter and microplastics, thereby contributing in particular to SDG 14 on the oceans. We fund international and non-governmental organization, organizations as well as research institutes. Land-based waste management systems is a key priority for the program uh, as effective waste mass management is crucial for reducing marine littering. It is estimated that 8 million tons of plastic end up in the ocean each year, and this corresponds to 15 tons of plastic per minute. It is also estimated that more than half of the plastic waste that ends up in the oceans originates from a few countries in Southeast Asia. The program therefore uh, prioritizes projects in this region. Encouragingly, across the ASEAN, we see sustainability at the top of the agenda and we note a clear will to act. In Singapore, the government is both ambitious and very clear about its objectives. Moving from, from a linear to a circular economy, however, is a profound transition. And we need to redesign systems to ensure that waste becomes a resource and that all resources are reused as many times as possible. This clearly requires us to work together across regions and countries. It calls for collaboration between governments, academia and the private sector. And I am therefore uh, very encouraged to see the interest in the Nordic experience and in the solutions offered by Nordic companies and I believe sustainability and the circular economy will be key areas of cooperation between the Nordics and Singapore and the wider region going forward. Together, we will develop smart solutions for the green economy. We will build back better. Uh, so I wish you all a fruitful discussion and look forward to hearing from our insightful and experienced panelists. Thank you, Sami. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for these wise and kind words. Um, next, I then would like to invite um, and give the stage to Pa Christian Lund, who is a counselor at Innovation Norway here in Singapore and also acts as our moderator today. So with that, Pa Christian, over to you. Thank you very much, Sami, and thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Nego, for your, uh, for your introduction. This uh, really uh, sets the agenda for, uh, for the discussion uh, today. Uh, this is a closing event uh, of a two week quite intensive program where we have brought uh, Nordic companies, Nordic solutions 
to address uh, some of the challenges uh, we see in the waste and water management uh, uh, areas. Uh, with Singapore as a, um, let's say, starting point, but with a bigger ambition of jointly developing solutions for the much larger uh, challenges in Southeast Asia and Asia market. Uh, uh, Ambassador Nego mentioned the, uh, the, the, where the sourcing of the marine litter is uh, uh, combined with the land uh, waste management propagates into the ocean and uh, much of that sourcing is from this region. We have a great uh, panel today that will kind of uh, both raise uh, the, uh, the issues from uh, uh, specific technological solutions, although the first panelist will also address a very concrete and very tangible uh, solution that way that will play into to these, these markets uh, to look at the, the bigger issues of, uh, of Southeast Asia in the waste and the resource management. Uh, the key uh, word again here is uh, looking uh, or transforming our thinking, the industry from linear to circular economy and to look at waste as resources. Uh, we will uh, hear uh, we, the panel, uh, very, very uh, uh, impressive panel, uh, which will address, as I said, specific solutions. We will address the, the challenges of marine litter. Uh, we have uh, an example from a, a major uh, uh, enterprise, a corporation uh, in region here in Thailand that are looking over here, how they are thinking in circular economy. And also, uh, of course, uh, the representative of the environmental agency here in Singapore uh, to talk about Singapore's uh, new green plan. So with further ado, I'd like to introduce the first uh, uh, panelist, which is Bing Zhao, uh, head of collection system uh, in Asia for Tomra. Uh, Bing has been uh, a former uh, head of investor relations at Tomra, uh, which is one of the uh, most attractive and reputable uh, waste management companies uh, listed in, in Norway. Uh, in her role as a member of the group strategy team, uh, uh, she developed strategies, plans to fuel long-term growth opportunities for the companies. And we see the results of that now in, in China, uh, in Southeast Asia, in Singapore and other places. Uh, so, uh, Bing, maybe you can take us uh, through what the Tomra uh, is doing to address the, uh, the, uh, the waste uh, and the circular economy uh, challenges and opportunities in this region. Hello, Bing. We cannot, we cannot hear you. Okay, if you unmute. Do you hear me now? Now we hear you. Okay, good. <laughs> Just a minor uh, incident, right? Um, okay. So thank you Nordic Innovation House for having me and Tomra. Um, can we please go on with the presentation? Yes. Then the next page, please. Um, so two words about Tomra first. We have been pioneers within the space of sensor-based technologies ever since we were established back in 1972 with innovation, invention of the world's first reverse vending machine, we like to believe. And thanks to this first mover advantage and technology leadership, we have maintained number one market position across all the business segments we play in today. We focus on providing collection and sorting solutions to make more use of valuable resources. And we are pleased to say that sustainability also equals profitability. Please next page, Sami. Now let's move on to the main focus of today. We're talking about the beverage packaging as part of the plastic packaging also. So first of all, why do we target these packaging material? It's obviously many of them. Uh, it's often used only once. It may easily be littered, um, but recycled properly, it can also become high quality material reused again. So using Tomra's reverse vending machines, they are essentially an automated way to take back empty beverage containers every year. Tomra collect more than 40 billion containers. So this is a sizable number, yet this only accounts for less than 
of all the beverage containers sold in the world. So we know that many of the containers, they are not coming back um, how it should be and maybe unfortunately ending up in our oceans uh, and food chains. But some countries, they have nailed it. And we see that in countries with deposit return schemes, the collection rates of the beverage containers, they are on average exceeding 90%. So next. Let me then try to explain the concept of deposit refund scheme, DRS, using Norway as an example. So when um, we grow up in Norway, basically, the consumers, when you buy the beverage, uh, deposit is added on top um, of the sales price. So when the consumers then return the empty containers through a designated channel, for example, a Tomra RVM, they will get their deposit back. So there is a rewarding experience and a financial incentive for the consumers to recycle. The bottles are then being transported to a central processing hub before being sorted, bailed, and made ready for high quality recycling again. And then the water bottles pictured here, they are actually using 100% recycled PET. Um, in this way, um, the DRS has then successfully enabled closed loop recycling, um, and we can say that the circle is complete. So now we know that high performing deposit return schemes have proven to have clear environmental benefits. In addition to economic savings, diverting material from being disposed. There are also social benefits uh, in terms of green job creation and better access to recycling for the consumers. Now, next, please, Sami. And it's therefore very inspiring for us to see that the Singaporean government last year became the first country in Asia to introduce a comprehensive DRS on used beverage containers as part of its focus on tackling packaging waste. Tomra will continue um, to leverage our global expertise on collection systems uh, and DRSs to engage in close discussions with NEA Oh. Uh, I think that we lost lost Bin to the, um, yes, the connection. Yes, it's aligned to China. She's calling yeah. to China. So uh, we, maybe we move forward then and hopefully she will come uh, back we, shortly. Yes, we'll do that. We were halfway into a very interesting and I was uh, exciting to hear the, uh, the kind of the summaries of this one. Uh, but let's do that. Let's move on to uh, to uh, Thomas Choa, which is our second panelist. Uh, he's a senior advisor now at the Alliance to End Plastic Waste here in Singapore. Uh, Thomas moved to uh, the Alliance uh, after nearly 35 years of service with the Royal Dutch Shell Group across the world. Uh, you have a rich, diverse uh, experience and achievements across many businesses, including chemicals, refining, LNG, gas. Uh, and in addition to uh, being uh, a, a, a senior advisor to the, to the Alliance, you're also a, um, a lecturer and uh, adjunct professor at the Singapore Man Management University and Nanyang Technological University. So uh, in addition to talk about the Alliance, Thomas, uh, uh, maybe one word on your journey from uh, the oil and gas uh, industry to, how can I say, the other side? <laughs> Please. Yeah, you put me on the spot there, Pierre. So, um, I mean, I'm obviously a, I'm very much attracted to the uh, mission of the uh, Alliance to End Plastic Waste. Um, I think it is a, a very important cause, um, which um, I think all of us share is a, a, a big challenge. Um, and in many ways, I think it ties in quite well with the presentation. So I'll tackle that up here as we go along. Um, so can we move to the, yeah, move on, please. Okay, so um, I think this has been said enough. Uh, there's plenty of uh, plastic being produced and used every day. Um, uh, very sadly, because of um, mismanagement and also because of um, poor 
uh, execution, a lot of plastic is lost into the environment uh, to the extent of you know a number that you can see there, 11 million, 11 million tons per year, which is a frightening number. Um, and um, much of it um, basically, you know, is left um, untouched um, and is a, a huge waste of resource. I think we heard from Bing earlier on that, you know, what, what you can do is to turn waste into a resource as an opportunity. And if you were to calculate and convert that to some form of value, you can see on the bottom there that this is, you know, some people have estimated that this could generate, um, you know, $120 billion of value. Um, out of the ways that some um, escape into the environment. Um, next slide, please. So if we, um, given, given that situation, um, the industry felt that it could not just sit there and watch this happening. Um, it has uh, to take some form of leadership. Um, it, it recognizes its responsibility from a capability point of view. Um, it recognizes that it can make a difference um, so back in um, uh, late uh, 2018, so you can see a uh, January 19, uh, 27 founding CEOs got together um, of these global uh, plastic chain companies uh, with a goal to raise one and a half billion US dollars. Um, today we have, um, you know, we have actually 57 um, member companies, 57 CEOs. Um, and have raised over a billion dollars um, for, for the cause of ending plastic waste in the environment. I'm also delighted to say that I'm amongst friends, um, firstly with my Norwegian friends, of course, but also with my friend uh, Tina from SCG, uh, who, which is uh, representing also a member company, as well as being earlier on, um, Tomra is also a member company of the Alliance. Um, so I feel very comfortable in this environment. We are driven by these key principles, um, which are basically, you know, to act immediately. Um, we're not waiting for the perfect solution. Um, and we believe that um, action is needed right now, uh, as much as possible, um, to move away from this, um, as you said, linear economy towards a more circular economy, certainly taking waste out of your environment and ideally to change it into to convert it into a resource. It needs collective action. I think the um, His Excellency, the Ambassador, talked about um, collaboration, the need for parties to come together, because this is a global problem. No single organization or even a number of organizations can tackle this. We need each other. Um, every organization that's out there, whether or not it's a government, NGO, or as, as um, the ambassador highlighted, or the um, a private sector, we need all to come together to work together. Um, it is a cross value chain um, effort. So you'll find that our member companies cut across the entire plastic value chain from producers to brand companies, to waste management companies, to recyclers and, and so forth. Um, so we believe that this is quite unique in pulling together parties across many industries and value chain to work in for this common cause. And finally, we want to stress that the Alliance is a do tank. So we, we do things rather than we talk about things. Uh, we don't pride ourselves in coming up with new ideas, but we would like to see what our intent is converted into action. Um, so, so we are on the ground, we support activities on the ground to, to as much as possible and as quickly as possible take plastic waste out of the environment. So next slide, please. So this gives you a snapshot of member companies um, who are contributing to um, the, the funds and the efforts um, to get this whole uh, process going. Um, we are just about you know, coming up to two years old as an organization, so relatively young. Um, you know, compared to many other organizations out there doing this work. Um, but we're very proud of, um, you know, being able to harness together um, incredible strength through our membership companies. Um, they don't only contribute funds, but they contribute capabilities. And that sets us apart, I think, from many other alliances. Um, companies like those um, in this call, SCG and Tomra, are very active in many of our decisions. They are very active in terms of, you know, technical advice. They are very active in providing on the ground support 
um, in the projects that we're trying to execute in, um, in the locations where we feel that they, they warrant um, the help and, and the attention. Um, so you can see also that these companies are spread around the world. Um, needless to say, we've got those in Asia, like and I mentioned already, um, SEG, but also Kirin in Japan, Sumitomo Chemicals, Mitsui Chemicals, um, our friends in India, Reliance, um, Sinopec of China, but of course, all the other European companies, Middle East companies like Equate, um, and plenty of American friends as well in this membership. So this is, um, the, the, the membership growth is, is on a continuous basis, um, and we hope to grow this um, onwards and upwards to get as many parties joining the effort as, as quickly as possible. Next slide, please. So besides member companies, uh, we leverage on what we call a partners, um, formal partners that join hands to help us through this process. Uh, so organizations like ADB and ECLAIR and USAID, um, they're part of um, th this community of uh, formal partnership uh, to support our activities. We also have um, you know, more intellectual partners like McKinsey, for example, and BCG, Bain, uh, to help us you know, to, to provide inputs and to challenge some of the things that we're doing. Next slide, please. Um, so these are the four strategic areas we're focusing on, right? So when we talk about do tank, we, we do things um, in, in these four pillars. They are in the infrastructure area, um, mainly in Asia and Africa, as you can see on the, on the slide material. Um, innovation. So, you know, we realize that we don't have the solution um, to close the loop, you know, in a full circular fashion. Um, innovation in terms of a more effective solution, less challenging um, in terms of implementation um, and quicker in delivering the outcome. Um, we recognize that education is key. Um, and I think later on when we have a bit of a panel discussion, um, you know, that we, one thing perhaps, uh, you know, that the Nordic countries have done particularly well is in the, in the educational side of things. And finally, there's the cleanup, right? So the, the waste is out in the environment right now. It is in the ocean, it is on the river, it is uh, around us, and um, we can't ignore them. So there's also the cleanup pillar. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, along those pillars, um, there's, there are what we call themes, um, themes which drives um, the effort that we're, we're doing under those strategic pillars. So one of which is, you know, starts with engaging with cities. So from the left-hand side, you can see on the bottom is trying to illustrate that we're moving um, along that first step of a circular economy, right? So, so you have to make sure um, right from the start that there's a good collection system. And in many parts of the world, um, and, and that includes here in Southeast Asia, um, there is no collection system. Uh, Singapore is privileged and indeed very capable when it comes to waste collection. We witness it every day out there, um, and I'm amazed at how effective and efficient they are. Uh, but not many other places um, in this part of the world do enjoy that efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, so we are trying to also help in um, countries and locations and cities uh, to put in basic infrastructure in order for them to make a start along that circular loop. Um, then it moves to societal behavior, right? So part and parcel of making that change as a first step is to get the society with you in terms of saying, yes, I want to participate. And yes, I want to do the right thing. Yes, I want to behave in the right way. And then from there, we can move on to advanced recovery and recycling. Um, these are to do with, you know, how, what, what do you do then after you've collected it? Um, you, you, you know, here, in this case, we obviously want to make it possible um, to recycle. Um, and there's some technologies involved in terms of, you know, what Tom Rai is doing, like sorting them um, and, you know, making sure that it goes to the right place, um, process it, and ideally being able to put it around in a circular loop. Um, you know, the ones that are collected, for example, we're create, trying to create value for them. Uh, so, you, you know, after recycling, you can, you can, you know, preferably upcycle it. Sometimes you can repurpose. Um, the uh, plastic waste that's been collected. Um, and finally, you know, if you want to get around that loop, and once we get around that loop, you want to make sure that right at the outset, we design for circularity. This is a whole mindset change, I think, for engineering and design of products that are out there. 
So if you design right at the start that I want to recycle this, it, it sets a whole different tone and capability around a circular economy. Next slide, please. So these are you know, where, where um, the Alliance are doing projects, are supporting projects across five uh, investment, uh, the five investment teams. There are over 30 projects already um, and over $100 million have been committed. Um, and you know, obviously we're measuring um, waste diverted and we're also measuring uh, indirect impact like innovation and value creation. Um, there are a couple of projects um, which you can see on the bottom of the slide where you can um, go to the YouTube um, platform and you can view some of those activities that are supported by the Alliance. So we're particularly proud that we got some of these projects going and they are growing in size and impact. So, you know, again, the other point I want to raise here is that it is um, an international effort, although you can see the concentration of projects primarily in Asia. Next slide, please. So I want to finish with this um, um, material because it sort of summarizes this circularity loop and circular economy that the um, an ambassador talked about. Um, we're very much striving to create and to support a circular economy for plastics. Um, so, you know, you basically go from production all the way around, um, as I illustrated earlier on. But do, we do recognize there are a number of gaps, right? So these are sort of key key gaps that we've identified that we need to work on. Uh, we talked about earlier design for circularity. So there's a design gap, there's a data gap. There's a data gap because there isn't one platform that you can go to where you, know, you, can, you can drill down and say, is this a hotspot? Um, what is the quantity of you know, plastic being generated and waste being generated? What's the, what's the database with respect to what recycling facilities are available in that particular location? Um, so there's, we, we think there's a big data gap. Um, there's an alignment gap as well. I mean, if you talk to, I'm sure in this forum of nearly a hundred people, um, if you were to talk to each other, I'm sure there's going to be 20 different varieties of interpretation of what circular economy actually mean for them. So the, I think it's also important to keep um, working together to understand what um, you know, the challenges are and how do you achieve a circular economy. Um, quantity gap is about basically, you know, good collection system, as I mentioned to you earlier on, but it's also about actually interestingly enough supply chain to supply to um, recyclers. Um, I'm increasingly hearing from recyclers that what they struggle with is to get the feedstock for their recycling. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of a, a bit of a um, irony, right, that, you know, on the one hand, there's so much waste out there. On the other hand, the, the, the ones that can process them do not have easy access to them. There's a quality gap in terms of what you can recycle. Um, and here, there's a lot of work to do with respect to segregation and sorting. And finally, the affordability gap. Um, so as I said earlier on, there are technologies out there. We can actually do circularity, in, in my view, even today. Right? There's technology out there. But there's this affordability challenge um, in terms of, you know, can it be done economically? With that, I'll, I'll uh, end my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas. Uh, very, very impressive and, and encouraging. Uh, I wonder, Bing, uh, are you with us? Would you, would you like to, uh, to conclude your, your presentation or uh, can you? Do, you, do you hear me, Pek? Yes, we do. Oh, I'm, do. I'm really sorry. I'm doing my best here. Yes, I can just uh, round up. So basically what I was saying is that we really congratulate Singapore and NEA. Uh, and, and Tomar is very eager to facilitate the closed loop solution, support the ultimate goal um, of boosting recycling. And we also want to encourage a viable and cost effective uh, DRS towards all stakeholders here. Uh, finally, we also hope to demonstrate our commitments through strengthened local presence. We're setting up a showroom uh, these days and I hope very, uh, you're all very welcome to visit us soon. Uh, and then we look forward to team up with strong players across the value chain, um, including, uh, of course, Alliance to end plastic waste, <laughs> and then together make DRS in Singapore a flagship model for the wider ASEAN region. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Bing. And uh, your technology and, and your solution is, is, uh, is I, I believe, and Thomas, uh, please arrest me if I'm wrong, but these are the kind of, of uh, uh, technologies and solutions that are uh, helping to, to, to bridge these gaps uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, methodologies, infrastructure for doing the recycling and and uh, and uh, adding value to to waste. Uh, let's go on to uh, to uh, the, the the next uh, panel speaker, which is uh, Tina Rovik. Uh, his she is a global director for circular economy uh, from the CM Cement Group SGC, uh, where uh, your uh, or. Your, your company's ambitions now is to take a frontier role on developer, uh, developing circular economy in Southeast Asia region through uh, international partnerships and innovation. You have had uh, many, many years in the, in the petrochemical and, uh, and chemical industry in Norway, uh, being a CEO in the polymer expertise company, Norner, uh, and, uh, and also before that, the innovation manager in Borealis, uh, both of them very, very, uh, um, state of the art and frontier companies when it comes to, to, to polymer and, and, and plastics. So uh, Tina, how did you end up in, uh, in Thailand? Well, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, I, um, well, I was, as you mentioned, leading the uh, innovation center Norna, working with uh, polymer and petrochemical globally. And uh, not, uh, we were very active using, uh, uh, innovation Norway as our kind of prolonged arm to reach out to new markets because we were basically selling services uh, similar to uh, research institutions. So, so we needed to new customers very quickly. And then, um, and to one of our contacts, uh, then uh, Axel Blom actually in in Thailand that worked for Innovation Norway, he put us in contact with SCG and uh, PTT and some of the other players there and, and very very quickly I think within a week some weeks we, we started to we've got a very good connection and, and started really to to uh, develop uh, uh, next generation polymers uh, with them and actually Norna still do that a lot especially on recycling and etc so uh, it's a good example of how you can enter the, <laughs> enter the market so, so yeah so that's why we ended up there and after a while we also um, Convinced SDG to acquire Norner because very strong on on uh, innovation and and uh, so in the last years now I've been working uh, uh, for SDG as a global director of circular economy but I also at the same time in the board of Norner and 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 take care of our uh, overall business in Europe when it comes to innovation so yeah so that's how the how it can go so it has been a successful story I would say. Yes. Uh, would you like to say uh, a bit more of, of your strategies? In, uh, in, uh, yeah, I have a presentation. Yeah. So, yeah, so we can go through that. Yeah. Okay. You can take the next slide. So, so uh, I of course now I see the panel is very focused on the plastics, and then you heard my background. Of course, is uh, is uh, plastic is important part of what I would, I'm doing, but I also work uh, for the corporate uh, SDG. So a few words about SDG. Um, so we started over a hundred year ago uh, by a royal decree when the the king wanted to build the country, and that started with cement and building material. So that's also a huge part of our business is a cement and building materials so all the way to retail stores and tiles and whatever you have and this production is spread out in southeast asia and uh, and then we are into sg chemical which is a raw material producer of, of polymers so uh, uh, of course that's uh, where our focus is very much on circular economy because of the plastic littering problem and then we have also another division, which is the packaging, so the old paper industry. So that means we are also quite heavily into paper packaging, which of course also booming these days. So, so, uh, so it's a very interesting company. We are fifty-five thousand people. Uh, so, uh, and uh, I'm reporting into Bangkok, although I, I have an office in Porsgrunn in Norway. So, <laughs> so that's uh, that's how it works. Okay, so that was a little bit about SG. We can take the next one. Um, so, uh, 
we have very early on said that uh, our mission has been to become a regional business leader. That means that our main production hub is Southeast Asia. And uh, but the emphasis should be on innovation and sustainability. And of course, that was also the basic reason why, why they agreed to acquire Norner at that time, uh, because uh, I have a report to the CTO and he is very visionary and see that a lot of exciting things happen in Europe. So he need to entangle with collaboration in, in Europe. And Norner is one example. The other example, for instance, Oxford. I think SG now is one of the biggest sponsor at Oxford. Um, so that's um, so that also we can then uh, I think now, especially now in circular economy, recycling of plastic and other solutions is so important. And uh, uh, the same principle is that we should then collaborate also in Europe with European technology partner uh, and also solution partner, but also R and D environments. And uh, of course, sustainability has been part of that all the time. And uh, now, some months ago, we also pledged that we should be net zero by 2050, which is a great, great, uh, I would say, promise when you are a cement producer for chemistry, you will know that that produces CO2. So, so that's a big challenge. And uh, that has also put even more pressure on me. Uh, my main responsibility is international partnership. So uh, Alliance of to End Plastic Waste is one, but we need also to work now even harder on the net zero aspect. Uh, of course, circular economy is an important part of that, reusing raw material. Okay, you can take the next. Uh, this is such a short topic in five minutes. So, so, so actually from discussing and thinking a couple of years ago, now we start to do. Uh, we were work in the area that I think was stressed very much by Thomas. So we work on design for recycling. So the, the product that we produce need to be, be able to be recycled. And we need to have concept for our customer, which is customers of us is typically, of course, car industry, etc. But it's also a lot in the packaging industry. So, so that's why we have to engage here. And, and uh, we do a lot now. Uh, we have built up a new business for this and we're now going to recycle plastic, which we typically people think about the mechanical recycling. So you kind of uh, collect and grind, etc. So we build up a business in uh, in Thailand on that. It's a huge challenge to get hold of plastic waste raw material, which is, as Thomas mentioned, this is a very strange thing. So we need to work a lot with the infrastructure, although we're not a waste company. So, uh, and, and we also uh, need to develop our market and cu customer and market mechanism and the politic, uh, politic uh, as uh, also mentioned by Tom, you need to have the rules of regulation to do the right thing. So we are missing a lot there. So, but we are we starting and, and this week we now announced that we have done a big uh, acquisition in Europe. Uh, we are bought um, a recycling plant uh, in Portugal. And uh, the large, quite large one, 35,000 tons. And, and that one is going to make, learn, uh, then we will learn the market uh, because in Europe, it's a little bit more mature and we can learn a lot from that business and then take that back to Asia. We are also working on feedstock recycling. So chemical, re chemical recycling, right, where you can kind of melt down the plastic and make new feedstock, which is super important. And we have built a, dem a huge demo unit now in Thailand, up running now. Uh, and we are working with a type of bioplastic using kind of renewable feedstock from, from uh, biomass. A lot to say about this. Okay, jump further. Next one. Uh, and then uh, collaboration is a key. So uh, we see we very clear on that. We cannot do this alone. That's why we are part of Alliance to End Plastic Waste. I love it because I'm a chemical engineer. So I like doing, as Thomas mentioned. And we have a lot of interesting projects now. We are collaborating now in, in Thailand, in Vietnam, and we're also looking into um, Indonesia because we have around 7,000 people, a lot of assets there, so we can really boost those projects. And we are part of the MacArthur Foundation, and we are also part of the World Business Council of Sustainable Development, which learns us a lot about new system thinking. So extremely important arenas, and we would like to join more of these. So that's uh, especially within my, my field. And we do a lot of the things that Thomas mentioned. It's really a lot of fun challenge in this area, but so, so important. Okay, next one. Uh, so, uh, of course, I don't uh, live in Asia, and, but I am there quite much. And I, I from my point of view, uh, I mean, it's a lot of opportunities, opportunities there for uh, Nordic companies because uh, 
I mean, it's, it's many gaps to be closed, as also Thomas addressed. So uh, our, we see really that we need to get the infrastructure going, and, and that is not necessarily high tech even. It, it's just to make the society work. Uh, we just started up a project now in Bangkok together with the uh, with the alliance called the Mega City. Work together with with the government and really try to find ways to make to stop the leakage. And and we need also to uh, to uh, look at quality, etc. But again, who pays? And that's maybe the challenge with the market entry here because basically customers the kind of the communities too. So I really en uh, encourage people to work with their network partner like us, Tom and other to, to, to enter in a way that market. Uh, I would say that the Asian government has now very clear that they want to go to zero waste, etc. So not only in the plastic area, but we, for instance, we have in all our factory, we have zero waste philosophy. And that is also, uh, I think, uh, good opportunities for the waste management, uh, water management. Uh, and uh, so I think that the willingness is there, but uh, still, uh, I think now, in, I would say the industry is more driving, I would say. <laughs> so, uh, so we need that the laws and regulation is kind of, uh, uh, picking up and that's a lot of work to, to make that change also uh, I think Singapore of course is there but uh, we have many other countries large countries where pollution is a huge problem and uh, and so again, uh, as mentioned, going to value chain partnership because nobody can solve this alone. So, so we need good friends. So we need, uh, and especially we work globally because we want to pick the best one in the world when we and, and kind of leapfrog the development. That's the idea. And then I think that um, all the uh, zero waste, zero emission pledges from the big company and the countries really uh, generate gaps to be closed and require also uh, also new technology solution. I discussed with my colleague uh, working more on the water waste and she said that uh, definitely that, uh, for instance, recycling of water has become a huge, huge issue uh, where, uh, where we need new, good, efficient technology solution, of course, to a good, on a good cost level. So, so I think that that was uh, very hasty, uh, my view on, <laughs> on Asia. So, uh, and we work, of course, in partnership with very many also companies and in discussion with many, uh, some, some, of the ones, some of the ones that are here, but also others to really find good solution. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Tina. Uh, and as you said, you're, you're really a doer. Uh, I kind of like the correlation between uh, being a doer and a chemical engineer. So uh, <laughs> happy, happy to hear that. Uh, we'll uh, we'll introduce the last uh, panelist, uh, which is uh, uh, Dalson Chung, uh, Director of Industry Development and Promotion with the National Environmental Agency here in Singapore. Uh, so uh, Mr. Chung spearheads uh, NEA's effort in developing the in uh, environmental industry in Singapore to meet uh, local needs and help environmental company globalize especially in the waste management and the cleaning industry sector that we are talking about here. Uh, Mr. Zhang, you established Clean Enviro Summit Singapore as an international knowledge and business uh, exchange platform for the envir uh, environmental sector, which is also in line with what, uh, what both Tina and, uh, and Thomas talked about, the, the international collaboration. Uh, and you're involved in, uh, in several overseas environmental projects as NEA's principal uh, consultant. So, Dolson, can you uh, uh, enlighten us a bit on where Singapore stands and where Singapore is going now with the Green Plan for the, uh, for the next seven years? Uh, thank you, Krista. Uh, Her Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to all of you. I'm very happy to join all of you at this uh, cruising webinar today. Uh, I'd like to thank the Nordic Innovation House Singapore for inviting NEA to this webinar. I hope the participating Nordic companies have established good business leads and contacts through this waste water food virtual market entry program. Singapore and the Nordic countries shared many similarities in our interest to push for greater environmental sustainability. Next. Next slide. Yeah, sustainability has always been a part of Singapore's DNA uh, since we uh, declared independence in 1965. Even before the term became widely used, Singapore has always pursued sustainable development by balancing economic growth with protecting our environment. Hence, the Singapore Green Plan 2030 was launched this year to chart our way forward to tackle climate change. 
The green plan builds on the efforts of pristine decades with sustainability as a new engine of growth. Next slide. The key programs of the green plan are organized according to the following five pillars with green government and green citizens as enablers. As part of the sustainability living pillar, NEA aims to adopt a circular economy approach to our waste and resource management to realize our vision of becoming a zero waste nation. These will open us to a new economic opportunities, ensure a sustainable future for Singaporeans and contribute to the goals of the 2030 agenda. NEA cannot achieve the circular economy alone and will need to work with other stakeholders, businesses and civil society. As a small open export oriented economy, it will be challenging for Singapore to have an influence over product design or achieve circularity alone. Hence, it is also important to engage countries and international organizations to promote circularity at the regional level. Specifically, we will build up Singapore's recycling capabilities by sorting better and reducing contamination. By 2030, we aim to reduce the waste sent to our landfill by 30%. We will front load our efforts over the next five years to achieve a 20% reduction by the year 2026. By 2030, Singapore will be a clean and green city in nature under this second pillar. We will plant 1 million more trees across our island, which will sequester another 78,000 tons of CO2. Singaporeans will enjoy cleaner air and cooler shade. Thirdly, under the energy reset pillar, a cleaner and better use of energy is core to any plan to tackle climate change. Singapore's urban environment makes us an ideal city for adopting electrical, electric vehicles or EVs. To support the growth of EVs that run on cleaner energy, we will more than double our EV charging point targets from 28,000 to 60,000 by the year 2030. We will tap the capabilities of the private sector to build up this infrastructure. The fourth pillar is the green economy, whereby we will anchor new investments and leverage opportunities in the sustainable industries to facilitate business growth and job creation. For the fifth pillar, we are increasing our local food productions to make our food supply more resilient for a resilient future. My colleagues in SFA have announced our 30 by 30 target by 2030. We aim to meet 30% of our nutritional needs through locally produced food. We will do this in partnership with a vibrant agri-food industry and our communities. Finally, as key enablers, the government will take the lead in pursuing sustainable development through the Green Government Initiative and enhancement of public sector taking the lead in environmental sustainability. The Green Plan is also not just a government plan, but a blueprint that we have set out for ourselves as a nation. Everyone can be part of this effort under the Green Citizenry Initiative. We welcome Nordic companies with new and innovative solutions that are relevant to sustainable development and improve efficiency of existing green operations to explore opportunities in Singapore and beyond. Some areas and that the companies could look into include carbon abatement, digitalization, and chemical recycling of plastics, for instance. Next slide. Organized by the National, oh, sorry. Organized by the National Environment Agency, Singapore, since 2012, the Biennial Clean Environment Summit Singapore served as a global networking platform for thought leaders, senior government officials, regulators, and policymakers and industry captains. The last event was organized in 2018 that saw more than 24,000 attendees from 10 countries and from, sorry, from 110 countries and regions with 1,100 participating companies and a total of Singapore dollars, uh, 26 billion worth of business announcements. NEA will be organizing our fifth CESG event in April, 2022. It was originally in 2020, but we have to postpone it because of the COVID situation. First, we postponed to 2021, but because of the uncertainty in the COVID situation, we further postponed to April, 2022. And I would like to invite businesses like yours to exhibit at the event and showcase your innovative solutions to the international buyers from the world and also the region. With that, I thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dawson, for, uh, for introducing us to the Singapore's uh, plans and strategy. This also plays very much into our program, uh, of which this is the, the, uh, the ending event. 
Uh, I'd like to ask uh, each of you uh, a question related to the relevance of Nordic solutions uh, and also the relevance of the recognition or the, the, um, uh, the branding perhaps of the Nordic as being in the front when it comes to sustainable solutions and, and also for waste management. Uh, two of the panelists are, are Norwegians, so, so you, would, uh, you, know, you can reflect on this from your perspective, but, but also uh, Thomas and Dolph, maybe you could say a bit of where do you see that the, uh, the Nordic specifically, since this is this program, uh, is, is, can play a, a role when it comes to solutions, when it comes to culture, uh, when it comes to value set, etc. So maybe I can start with you, Bing, we do it in the order of uh, where you were introduced. Sure, thank you, and and you still hear me. Hope yes, we do. Okay, good. Yes, so uh, you know when when I think about uh, the Nordic values, uh, Per Christa, the first thing that comes to my mind is really the nature, right? Mm. So the fact that we really cherish uh, our nature, we are in one with our nature, and and we really want to live in harmony with with nature. And I think that is also where we really can share the same aspirations uh, with Southeast Asia. Um, the nature is really, the mother earth is really everything to us. Uh, and, and secondly, I think I find that uh, many Nordic companies, uh, <laughs> Tomra include, that have, have really a very deep knowledge um, into our kind of field of expertise. So we are often kind of really niche players, right? Um, but this also means that we really bring in very solid and unique solutions that can actually solve a complex task uh, in a sustainable and systematic way. So for example, um, Tomra's reverse blending machines. Well, if you just want to collect some random waste, kind of a, a automatic waste bin, you maybe don't need to use our machines. But instead, for example, in a DRS, like take uh, Singapore, for example, we estimate that uh, on average, maybe you will need to collect at least, say, 5 million containers every day. And if you want to do that, then you will need some serious technology uh, to really cater for efficiency, convenience, and system integrity. Um, and that is where we believe uh, we, we could be um, a good partner. And finally, I think the values, the Nordic values, it's about collaboration, as we all talked about. I think we like to be team players in the Nordics because we are so small. The countries are so small uh, on our own. So I think also the partnership and collaboration, as many of you have already reflected on, that is key to solving many of these uh, challenges and Nordic Innovation House and APW being uh, very good examples. Mm -hmm. So I think um, we could discuss that also um, in the next question maybe, but then the next key challenge is that how we can actually come together and also adapt to the local needs. Yeah, exactly. I'd like to, to, uh, to pass this over to Thomas. Uh, of course, you have a, an outreach and you probably know uh, European, Chinese, uh, Japanese uh, solutions and everything. Uh, in your, uh, at least three of your four pil pillars, uh, which is infrastructure, innovation, education, where do you see, again, same question, where do you see Nordic uh, solutions, Nordic uh, 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 concepts are playing in? Do we have an edge? Uh, do we have something that is unique in competition with, uh, let's say, local produced solutions or uh, Chinese or Japanese and other things? Yeah, um, thank you. I, I think this is uh, actually covered quite well by Bing. Um, but, you know, so from the Alliance perspective, um, looking at the sort of Nordic um, successes um, and, and they have successes um, that can be really proud of. Um, if you look at the infrastructure, uh, pillar, um, and and perhaps um, Bing will get a bit upset if I put reverse vending machine in the infrastructure um, category. But you know it is a it is part of the infrastructure of being able to secure um, the ways that's out there, the potential ways that that's out there, and turn it into a resource. Um, this covers, if you like, also the um, the quantity gap that we're looking for and the quality gap because. Um, a part of, I, I believe, the reverse vending machine concept or the DRS system is to, you know, also get people to return these uh, bottles in a, in a clean fashion, as clean as possible. So that also deals with the quality side of um, the gaps that we talk about in the circularity loop. But at the same time, um, what I find specifically um, unique about Nordic solution is its emphasis on, you know, on innovation. Uh, so, you know, you, you 
you talk, they, they're very focused in terms of um, zooming in on you know, some of the very critical um, elements in the success. Um, not because Tom Ra is a member of, um, of the Alliance, but you know, Tom Ra has quite unique capability in terms of um, scanning technology, in terms of segregation um, you know, capabilities. Um, we've learned that, for example, in, in some locations, um, you can literally just focus on two types of waste, right? One is wet and the other is dry, and the rest, the technology can actually look after quite well. Nice. Um, so, so that's um, that's a you. I think you know, the Nordic um, colleagues and friends have done particularly well. But what I what I really want to highlight here is um, what they have done with respect to the the behavior side of things. So, changing behavior. Um, I can't say it in Swedish, but there's a term for it. Um, but it's a, a part of this behavior lab um, that has been created um, in order to drive all the changes that's happening. I think um, one of the big challenges in my view in this part of the world, um, you know, Southeast Asia and South Asia is how do you how do you change the behavior of consumers, right, to the point that they see waste as a resource and they need to treat it with respect. Yeah. Um, so, so I think that is, you know, where the, the, the Panta uh, system in, 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 um, in, in the Nordics has been a tremendous success. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that's my, that's my observation up here. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. And, and that was uh, one I wanted to pass on to, to, to Dalson as well. But, but let's come back to, to that a bit later, Tina. Uh, you, you mentioned that you're acquiring a Portuguese uh, uh, recycling facility. Just to learn, no, not just to learn. You probably have a business <laughs> plan behind it as well. But for capacity building and and knowledge transfer, uh, one of the pillars in in, in in the alliance is also education, uh, and and uh, he also reflected about the consumer's behavior. So where where do you see also these kind of elements? Maybe the, also the softer elements uh, being brought from Europe or the Nordics into Asia. Where, where does that play in? Yeah, I mean, I think you point out uh, something that uh, that I mean, I would say that if you kind of come to the core of the infrastructure problem, if you don't solve the infrastructure problem, then uh, which now again back to the uh, plastic waste, uh, but also other waste. Uh, I mean, we have very little uh, sorting and segregation and uh, and again, that uh, of course that is not system for it, but in, in the end, it's the mentality. So I feel, feel education is not only education for for people on people on the street, but it's also education um, to government. And I think that, that the benefit of being Nordic, which I, I get get a little bit feedback on, is is that um, as you mentioned, the brand value. Uh, I think that we are known that in the Nordic, we are a little bit between frontiers on the waste and not only the plastic waste, but also other type of waste treatment and the bio, also bio, uh, also Sweden and, and Finland is very strong on the biochemistry. That I think that that can have a racing importance now when you're talking net zero, because uh, Thailand, for instance, doesn't have a renewable energy and they're not very good with wind wind energy either. So so that means that, uh, so there is also some interesting for those companies that are in this space, I would say. And and uh, and, uh, and Thailand now just pledged also that they will be uh, net zero waste and that we also uh, promote uh, biogas recycle. Yeah. Uh, but again, uh, things happen very long time. So I think that they, um, if the, the way that the Nordic need to come in is more like a maybe a consultant and helping, etc., because it's uh, um, and they will be listened to. Uh, but again, then we need from the Norwegian government in order to fuel those type of projects, because uh, actually, in order to build up that infrastructure, structure and do that kind of education, as you mentioned, which we of course do, but in in small scale, we need money. We need fund because who is going to pay for all this infrastructure and all this education? And the, and you're talking about many countries are not rich countries and doesn't have the tax system. So 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 that is maybe uh, my kind of uh, I hope is some from the ambassador etc. Around because we need to find out how can we how can we get that those programs and how can we finance those programs so we can really do that change in the community, which we have to do, which is part of actually what we have to engage in now, although it's nothing to do with our business, but uh, yeah. 
So we do, uh, again, as another lecture on that. <laughs> I guess it is. Uh, Dawson, uh, you, you mentioned in your introduction that uh, the Nordics and Singapore shares uh, many similarities and, and the way that you're thinking it with your green plan, the, the, the integrated thing, it, it sort of resonates a lot with, uh, with, uh, with uh, our mindset perhaps as well. But I've been living in, I've been living in Asia for 15 years uh, and, and five of them in, in, in Singapore. And I see there are differences as well. Uh, a little bit to what Thomas was saying, on the mindset of, uh, let's say something uh, as uh, concrete as the, the refund scheme, uh, just to pick up on what Tom Rice is doing. And that's also, uh, I also want to, to, uh, to uh, pull in uh, or, or combine my question with the question from the audience here, from Keith Indravan, is uh, how effective will it be to introduce a return winding, uh, return uh, 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 scheme? for 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 uh, for uh, containers etc uh, it, it really needs a full buy-in from the population it really needs to it has to be a bit of a cultural thing that it's automatic that you first of all you're willing to pay a bit uh, for this uh, deposit fund uh, or the or the, uh, the the surcharge and then you need to go to the effort of bringing this back to the return machine and things uh, will will this will the singaporean is the singaporean mindset when it's when in thinking of of uh, recycling and return and thing. Is that, uh, how, how difficult will it be to implement these kind of schemes, uh, Dawson? Well, hi, uh, Christo. I think there's a very tough question to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I will try my best to answer. Okay. Uh, so I'm not answering to your questions of uh, sharing the Nordic technologies and, and et cetera, et cetera, because I find that uh, just to quickly answer to your questions, uh, I think there are a lot of uh, Nordic technology that I think can be introduced to Singapore. Personally, I know that Neste has a good uh, technology that can turn waste to fuel and things like that. And yeah. also, uh, uh, of course, the uh, one of our waste company, I believe that uh, most of you have read in the recent media report that they actually use the uh, AI and robotic arms to sort their construction and demolition waste. Uh, that is from the Zen Robotics from uh, Finland. And uh, of course, the pneumatic waste collection system is already uh, set down in Singapore for com uh, conveying the waste. And of course, we want to see more such pneumatic waste collection system uh, in our public housing. I believe that the uh, condominium, there are uh, quite a lot of the uh, condominiums by CDL that have already installed the pneumatic waste collection system for its residents. Uh, I think the other part is the uh, Tombra. I think Ping has already mentioned uh, mm. Tombra has this reverse mating machine. And personally, I'm very impressed with the uh, Tombra machine when I visited one of the show, uh, I think in, in Germany. Uh, IFAT show, and uh, that is where I saw uh, a very fantastic creative uh, design for the RVM, uh, where they have a compactor functions within uh, the, uh, the machine itself, where they, they can actually compress it and compact it so much so that uh, they can actually accept even more uh, such uh, uh, beverage uh, containers. Well, uh, coming back to this, I think uh, we have tried out some uh, RVM machine. And I think the, at the shopping mall, like the NTUC outlets, uh, I hope uh, some of you will know where, what I meant, which is uh, some of the supermarket that we have. It's a very big chain uh, where we have a lot of RVM machine. And you can see a long queue of uh, people uh, depositing the uh, beverage uh, bottles and, and, and cans into this uh, RVM machine. Of course, uh, we want uh, more people to participate in this REM machine. In Singapore, we have some unique uh, circumstances. I, uh, I would say that 90% of our residents actually stay in high-rise building, 85% of which are in public housing. Mm. And, uh, and uh, we always have a very big obstacle to, to overcome, and that is our shoot within our, either within our home or actually at a common corridor. Right. And uh, that it will be uh, very uh, convenient for the residents to just throw down whatever plastic bottles or aluminum cans or even paper that is meant for recycling. Uh, so uh, we would have to think of a way to entice the residents uh, to bring down the, the, the recyclable either to the RVM machine or to, uh, to the, uh, the blue bin that we have in uh, H uh, HDB blocks. Uh, secondly is the also the uh, recycling uh, industry that we 
uh, want to build up in, in Singapore. And that is where uh, the industry transformation map just now, but Krista, you're mentioning um, the uh, formulation of the industry transformation map, where we need to build up the uh, recycling capabilities. Uh, for example, we are talking about plastics, right? So uh, mechanical recycling is very common. We can see it uh, very common uh, in Europe where they turn uh, PET into either resins or the latest technologies bottle to bottle. Uh, but what, what happened to the other plastic, which is uh, not cost effective uh, to be recycled through the mechanical recycling. So now we are exploring chemical recycling uh, for the other more 50% of the plastics, which uh, cannot be um, uh, economically viable recycled into something useful. So, but we will turn them into uh, pyrosis oil or what we call new oil in Singapore. Uh, that will also help us to resolve uh, the uh, plastic recycling rate uh, in Singapore. And uh, I, I have uh, very, every confidence that the Singaporeans uh, will be able to participate in the recycling program, adopt the advanced technology from the Nordic countries. Uh, if our residents, our population know that they, whatever they have contributes towards the recycling is turning into something useful, and, uh, and, and it's contributing towards sustainability, uh, towards uh, mitigating climate change effects. Yeah. Yeah. How about uh, your question? <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you very much. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, time is flying, and we do have a, uh, a session uh, in uh, three minutes uh, to, for, for the presentation of the, of the, the, uh, the 10 uh, Nordic companies we have here. So I would ask you extremely quickly, <laughs> a very, very uh, sh short answer to my question here is how can. Uh, what what was a single good advice you would give to the companies that are now in the Nordic companies that are looking at opportunities uh, in in uh, to come with their solution into Southeast Asia, uh, or could you can you help them just quickly? Uh, Bing. Uh, oh, okay. okay, we can start. That, that's with you. The, the oh, okay. Uh, I, I have I have I have two points. Uh, first point is under the industry transformation map, we usually talk to the premises owner yep. where we uh, address the operational challenges. That is where. We will call. We will uh, uh, issue a grant call to solicit solutions, and that is one way uh, that all the countries with its advanced solutions to come forward to offer their solutions to help to solve the uh, operational challenges of our um, premises owners. Uh, people like uh, CAG, people like uh, uh, CDL, Capital Land. They have, they have they have the shopping malls. Yeah. Uh, secondly, is just now I mentioned about the Green Environment Summit Singapore in April next year. And that is where you can showcase uh, all the Nordic technologies uh, to the world, not only to Singapore, uh, especially to the regional uh, participants. Yeah, so uh, these are the two uh, um, uh, avenues that I can offer for the uh, Nordic, uh, Nordic companies. We'll pick up on that the industrial uh, transformation maps and the, and the uh, clean environment uh, conference. We'll pick, uh, pick up yes. on that on that also going forward. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tina, I think. How can you uh, help and uh, help the companies getting into Asia? Oh yeah, yeah. No, normally I work as a matchmaker. I would say so. <laughs> if I uh, so uh, and I'm worked with many Norwegian companies, so I take further some I don't. If I find if I find the technology is interesting, then I bring them to the right person in SG. Uh, so I, I kind of my uh, additional role a little bit, and then uh, of course it's up to them then to sell in. But of course you have to be there and you have to build network and you need. I mean, you have the better network you ha have. That's how to make success and also understand uh, your, where you can make a difference. So I think that that's my best advice. And it's definitely used in uh, Nordic embassies and and, and business systems. Uh, very very useful. Thank you, thank you, Thomas. The alliance. Yeah, very simple. Join the alliance. <laughs> okay. Um, but because we are. That's what we're here for, right? Um, and yeah, then exactly. Connecting all the members together, like-minded, um, and and we do work very very closely with Dalson's team with yeah. NEA. Um, yeah. I, I, I hope that you know we have greater opportunities um, together. You know we can make this a success. Yeah. So so um, that's my that's my offer. Thank you. And finally, being uh, you are a successful company, you have a lot of experience in in in, in you know landing projects here. Uh, but you also could also work as a hub in a, let's call it an ecosystem, a Nordic ecosystem, uh, or one of the one of the pillars there. Uh, I hope Tom Markendi. 
I would definitely see that, say that we are still on a journey, a long journey in Southeast Asia. But that said, you know, we really want to take that journey together with everyone, all the Nordic companies. Uh, my three quick advice, trying to also um, sum up in a way. So first is that you all need to adapt the solutions to local need. Yep. Uh, but then, yes, that might involve some local presence, yeah. but you could also uh, lean on, for example, these different resources. Uh, so you can be a bit smart and agile in deploying the resources. And I think the second, uh, legislative support. So public-private partnerships uh, would, would definitely uh, be warranted. And the third is that um, we might, you know, it's, it's fine also to smart, start small, um, do some showcase, do some pilot, and then scale afterwards. Sounds good, very good advice. Thank you very much to all the panelists. Uh, fantastic uh, session, very good insight. Uh, I hope this was uh, useful for, not only for the companies and for us, but also for the only or uh, other uh, uh, people joining this, this webinar. So I'll give the word back to Sami that will guide us through the, uh, the quick pitching uh, of, the, of the Nordic uh, companies. Sami? Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much, Park Christian. Thank you also on my behalf for all the panelists. Super interesting conversation. I think that this, this could go on uh, for an hour or two, but uh, in the sake of, sake of time, uh, we need to move forward. Uh, so next, we're going to basically uh, give the stage uh, to our Nordic uh, program uh, participants. So we have 10 companies uh, presenting uh, two minutes each. And uh, here is the list of the companies. We have grouped them in three different categories where group number one is all about industrial wastewater solutions. The second group is more about organic uh, waste solutions. And then the third one is um, uh, one company uh, who has a very interesting solution about how basically river cleaning can be uh, a free service. So with that, I'm gonna hand over then the stage to Deva and we have Tony Franti from their team presenting Two minutes. Tony, over to you. Thank you, Sami. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Tony Franti from Devac Limited, and I'm a sales manager there. Clean water is the best for life, but still 80% of all wastewater is completely untreated. Wastewater treatment facilities need to be built, maintained, and updated as part of the fight to change this. This is where we, Deva, can help. As good and reliable equipment have a very important role in these facilities, and we offer equipment for sludge dewatering and removal with nearly 40 years of experience. Effective sludge collection and dewatering are important processes in fight to stop the climate change and destruction of nature by enabling methods to reach sustainability goals and circular economy. Nutrients can be collected and reused, and sludge offers an alternative source for energy production. Deva chain scraper systems are the most sophisticated system for sludge and scum collection, offering great benefits such as high efficiency, optimal land use, and low overall costs. Systems can be used in multiple applications from water and wastewater treatment to oil refineries. For sludge thickening and dewatering, our solutions are based around belt filter presses and gravity belt thickness. This equipment provides multiple advantages such as low energy consumption and low total lifetime costs. Our equipment are trusted and used by municipal and industrial customers worldwide. We have delivered over 4,500 systems to over 80 countries in all five continents. More than just good equipment are needed to carry out a successful delivery project that also reach, reaches the efficiency and sustainability goals. Qu quality, know-how, flexibility, accuracy, honesty, and right attitude are all needed to establish trustworthy partnership that lead to cleaner future. We are seeking new business opportunities in Singapore and Southeast Asia. To achieve this, we are looking for local partners and resellers in these areas. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you so much, Tony. Uh, next company is also coming from Finland. It's called Flutec, and we have Mikko C1 and presenting their solution. Mikko, over to you. Good afternoon. My name is Mikko C1, and I'm CEO of Flutec. Plutec has uh, over 50 years experience in industrial and power plant water and wastewater treatment. We have over 1000 installations globally for water management in industrial and power plants. Also in Southeast Asia, like a CM Craft uh, Thai paper, uh, Konkai in pulp and paper, Ryan refinery plant uh, in, in Thailand for petrochemical, and then we have a power plant reference in uh, 
Lombok Island, Indonesia, for instance. We have wide range of offering for index screening, water and wastewater treatment, as well as for process water and recycling treatment. I would like to highlight some technologies like a flu screen, traveling and drum basket filters for high capacity index screening in desalination plants or industrial or municipal plants. Flu duff dissolved air flotation, which is for high capacity uh, water treatment, wastewater treatment and recycling applications up to 3000 cubic meter per hour with one unit. And then we have a, a flu bed, moving bed biofilm technology for uh, advanced wastewater treatment for removal of organics and nitrogen. We have uh, patented technologies also, they are valid in Southeast Asia and China. We are globally present uh, through our partners also in Southeast Asia. But we are looking for uh, new partners and business opportunities in, uh, in Southeast Asia. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mikko. Exactly that two minutes. And also for our audience, we have uh, put the, the link to the company profile cards here on the chat. So you can find out more about their solutions and also their contact details are there. Great, uh, let's move forward then. And our next company is coming from Norway. It's called Scan Water, and we have uh, Tao presenting their solution. Thank you, Sammy. <clears throat> My name is Tao from uh, Scandina Way of Water Technology. I'm the sales and uh, uh, marketing director at the company. So, Scan Water has conducted uh, experiments on the development of the innovative water management solution. We call it uh, Green Energy. It is a smart green solution for integrated water and sanitation, stormwater management, energy supply, and the nutrient management in a city based on the principle of resource recovery and safe reuse and to increase the resilience of the cities. Uh, and also make urban development more climate, environmental, and human friendly with nearly zero emission. Uh, circular economic low climate and the water footprint. Uh, green energy will reduce the water consumption by using the water saving fixture as a vacuum toilet and the reuse the gray water source, uh, facilitate the recycling of the nutrients to urban or peri-urban agriculture and source almost unlimited pollution of the surface water. So integrated with a biogas reactor will allow the biogas, biogas production from the toilet waste and the organic household waste deliver heat and the power, but also the nutrient retained to su support the greenhouse food production. So all in all, the innovati innovative uh, in, uh, elements of a green energy is facilitated to reduce the water consumption, increase the safety, the minimization of the greenhouse gas emission, the promotion of reusing CO2 and the uh, waste-based nutrients in local greenhouse, the production of biogas or energy from the domestic organic waste and the production of fertilizer from the domestic organic waste and the promotion of ecologic sanitation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tao. Uh, our next company is coming from Finland. It's called Sophie Filtration and we have uh, Ville Hakala presenting their solution. Ville, over to you. Thanks, Sami. It's an honor and a, and a privilege really to be here and uh, part of a group of uh, companies that are really tackling serious problems. Uh, <clears throat> so my name is Ville Hakala. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Sophie Filtration based in Finland. And we have developed an innovation in industrial water filtration. Our patented technology can treat high flows of industrial wastewaters that are difficult to treat with traditional methods. So those can be, for example, polymers plants uh, to treat the uh, discharge water uh, for uh, microplastics removal. Um, it can be something else too that was discussed today. So instead of a plant polluting our rivers or lakes or seas with contaminated discharge waters, uh, we help our clients to reuse wastewater in their processes. 
Sophie filter technology um, uses a powerful ultrasound to self-clean, meaning it does not require chemicals or disposable filter changes to create very clean filtrate. So in, in addition, the system can be remotely controlled and monitored due to its IoT capabilities. We hope that our technology will be widely used uh, in Asia as well uh, to ensure cleaner water for future generations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ville. Uh, next, we have Valme and Heli Karail. Okay. Hello. Uh, so this is Heli Karala, and I'm working as a business manager in Valmet. Thank you for this possibility to present our solution. So typically, the wastewater sludge process has been controlled manually because this process area has been challenging for the real-time measurement. Valmet has now offering for this process area, and Valmet covers all solid real-time measurements need at wastewater sludge process. We have also optimizer application and industrial internet uh, offering as well. The reliable, advanced and long lasting products offering is based on the over 50 years measurement technology development, what Valmet has done specially in the pulp and paper industrial business area. It is very important that we have further de developed these te technologies with the end customer in order the application really fits to the wastewater area. We have over 2000 real-time measurement references available globally. End customers have reported tangible benefits by using Valmet technologies. I would like to highlight following ones. Savings in energy and chemical. Example, big wastewater plant reported 1 million euro annual savings. Typically, customers have reported 20 process decrease in polymer usage. Uh, uh, circular material has decreased with 50% inside the plant, 8% more gas production at the digester, and in the same time, heating costs were reduced with 10%. Customers have also reported that only 1% increase in dry cake solid means about 100,000 euro savings in the incineration or transporting cost. This means also that less devoted sludge is reproduced. Singapore is water hub to the Asia area. And in this event, we want to promote farmet offering as well as has new, new contacts and customer contact as well as business partner contacts. Thank you, and looking forward of more detailed cooperation discussion with you. Thank you, Heli from Valmet. Uh, next, we have Arkas Finn and Evren presenting their solution. And thank you, Sami. Hi, I am Evren Dönmez, CEO of Arkas Finn, House of State of the Art Solutions in Environmental Technologies. Our Tasfin R&D expertise is capitalized on 40 years of engineering and manufacturing legacy of Arta's sister companies in Finland, Germany, and Turkey. We design, produce, and implement water, waste, air, and bioenergy solutions. We cover all four aspects of the environmental technologies. In water, we deliver with pretreatment, filtration, softening, desalination, demineralization, and ultra-pure water treatment plants. In waste, we deliver physical, chemical, biological, either anaerobic, aerobic attached growth systems or MBR technology together with sludge digestion and dewatering plants. Equally, we have flue gas treatment, biogas desulfurization and bioenergy solutions. We designed and supplied over 400 customers. Our technology solve problems dealing with access to clean water for drinking in rural and urban settings, water treatment for specific industrial use, wastewater reuse and recycling, wastewater and sludge disposal, organic waste management, waste gas treatment, and renewable energy from waste. We have experience in projects catering for 100 to 100,000 people. Our philosophy is providing integrated, modular, customized, tailor-made solutions operating with renewable energy. As a one-shop solution provider, we design, manufacture, implement, and operate fully integrated solutions without any third-party intervention. In Singapore, we have already engaged a local representative. 
we are looking for opportunities to deploy our proven containerized and integrated solutions and partner with leading players for stationary solutions in Southeast Asia. We are looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you, Evren. Uh, next, actually two companies uh, providing one joint solution uh, coming from Norway uh, into Applied and Reklima. Thank you, Sami. Uh, my name is uh, Erik Dahlberg and I am the head of global sales at N2 Applied. And as you are mentioning in this session, I am also representing the company Reklima. I'm happy to deliver this message, uh, particularly to Mr. Chung of the National Environment Agency. I believe that we need to work together. The world is addicted to chemical fertilizers. 50% of the food production depends on these polluting fertilizers. And 30 years from now, the world population will reach 10 billion people. By that time, we will need to produce 50% more food and we need to do so sustainably. And in Singapore, you have a waste problem. And to apply it has developed technology addressing these issues, turning organic waste into potent fertilizers by using a plasma reactor resulting in reduction of greenhouse gases by 30%, improving yield in the field by 40%, and reducing air pollution by 50%. At Reklima, we already convert 20% of Norway's food waste into new food and fertilizer at a biogas facility in Norway, where we eliminate greenhouse gases we use the CO2 to promote photosynthesis in plants grown in greenhouses. Indoor vertical farming, rooftop greenhouses by use of hydroponics is implemented both by the Klima in Norway and also carried out now in Singapore. Jointly, we believe that we can develop this further. And we are very much happy to engage in business in Singapore going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Um, next company, also coming from Norway, uh, Norsk Biogas, and we have Ole presenting. Ole, over to you. Next slide, please. Yes, thank you. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Ole Rød, and I'm the founder and CEO of Norsk Biogas. It has been a pleasure to take part in this program, informative and clarifying where Singapore in particular, but also where the region is heading in the years to come. Norsk Pagas, share your ambitions, no even stronger after the seminars we have been through. I know we can, and I believe we should, take a position in the transformation that is going to take place within the area of food waste in Singapore. Pre-treatment of food waste is the key to success. It's a key because it influences both on upstream and downstream players within the value chain. We, as well as our system operators, our technicians, and our working environment know this business from the working floor. This knowledge we urge you to benefit from before the final decisions are going to be taken. Food waste would not disappear. On the contrary, it will increase with welfare development and an ever increased supply of goods in grocery shelves. Biomethane mined from food waste is a powerful resource with multiple areas of use. The dig estate is high quality fertilizer with important nutrition kept intact, the better alternative to artificial fertilizer. So my closing remark to you must be, take good care of the problem, it's valuable. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ole. And um, next company is again coming from Norway. We have uh, Terra Marine and uh, Purle presented their solution. Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Ole Vudan, yes, from Terra Marine. And uh, I have colleagues from waste to fertilizer. 
Um, and we are focusing on solutions for owners of organic waste and turn uh, the waste from being a problem to valuable resources. Uh, we combine our knowledge from waste handling, agriculture and economy and offer the best practical environmental option. We have a long track record in the wastewater industry in Norway, especially being the first one to commercialize tailor-made mineral organic fertilizer made from biosolids and exporting the new commodity from Europe to Asia. Uh, we bring together the best technologies that is available from our key equipment partners and design flexible solutions in close dialogue with our customers. Our core interest is commercializing the organic waste, reducing the cost for our customers and secure the recycling into new production of food. Dedication, high level of transparency and sense of regulation compliance is our mandate. We are looking for both waste owners that need our zero waste solutions, but also fertilizer companies that will represent us and our organic fertilizer product in their markets. Thank you. Thank you, Turle. And then uh, one more company left, it's called River Recycle, coming from Finland, and we have Janne Nootinen. Janne, over to you. Hello, all. Our company, River Recycle, cleans the rivers, recycles the plastic, and provides waste management. Uh, my name is Janne Nuutinen, and I'm a chief operating officer of River Recycle. River Recycle is a startup company offering a sustainable solution to prevent ocean plastic pollution in the world's most polluted river systems and affected communities. Uh, we have developed a technical solution to effectively remove floating debris from river systems and the value creation model for uh, waste plastic that can support local livelihoods and economic development. We develop circular business solutions to offer affected communities the infrastructure to turn an ecological problem into, the, into an economic opportunity. We are very much convinced that only a holistic approach can solve the problem in the long term. Uh, our goal is, is, uh, is to help uh, in stopping ocean plastic accumulation transported by rivers by establishing 500 cleaning and plastic recycling points on the banks of the world's most polluted river systems and affected communities. Uh, with these uh, 500 units, we aim to process over 3 million tons of plastic per year. Together with our partners, uh, we turn this problem of uh, plastic waste on its head to four intervention stages. River plastic collection, uh, waste processing solutions, land-based segregation collection, and community engagement. Our projects are designed uh, as scalable solutions that can be applied to other affected river systems around the world. We are uh, currently piloting solution in Mumbai, India, and uh, Bandung, Indonesia. We are developing further projects in Bangladesh, Philippines, Vietnam, Ghana, Thailand, and other locations as well. Well, uh, there are a number of moving parts not mentioned here. So uh, please contact us to hear how it can be done in reality. Thanks. Thank you so much, Janne. So that was um, the last company. So thank you all the 10 Nordic companies presenting their solutions also today. Thank you for all the, also for the, the last couple of weeks. And um, like I mentioned in the beginning, we are sending the recording uh, with and all the presentation decks for all the participants in the 24 hours. And, and those presentations, we also then have a links to the company profiles. And hopefully then you saw something interesting and you want to continue then the conversation with these great uh, Nordic uh, solutions. Uh, with that, we have come to an end of our session. So I want to thank you all of our panelists, all the Nordic companies, and of course, our audience for spending your Friday morning or evening or afternoon with us. Uh, thanks again and uh, have a great weekend. Uh, stay safe and bye-bye.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, stay Thank safe. You. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.